Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my brand new show. Throughout this season, after every single round, I'm going to do a weekly wrap. Uh, where I'm going to say who won, who lost, standout performances, standout players, uh, things I saw from the game. I'm going to have a section called Coach's Corner, where I'm going to interview some coaches and get their thoughts on the games and their opinions. Uh, so make sure you're following, make sure you're subscribing so you don't miss out on anything like that. Obviously, a different setting. We're in my bedroom. We're really going back to the roots of the original show. Uh, I just think it's a lot more homely to do it like this. Obviously, by the title of the video, I'm going to be doing season predictions. This is an extremely difficult thing to do in NBL 1, because one, you don't know how the imports, uh, well, you don't know the imports. Two, you don't know how the imports are going to perform. Three, not all players have been signed to the roster, so some teams, I think Warwick, don't even have their full roster out yet. Um, but, you know, I'm going to try my best. I do have some insider information. I'm not going to leak anything yet. <laughs> Down the line, I'll leak something. I don't know. I'm, I'll really, I'm going to try not to. Leave in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of these predictions. If I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my iPad with all my notes. Uh, but let's get started. Coming in dead last, because someone has to, I have the Southwest Slammers, number 14. They only won two games last season, and guess what? They brought the exact same team back. So <laughs> it's a hard market anyway, because it's Southwest. No one really wants to go there if you're from Perth. If I was good at basketball and I could get paid to play down there, I would. I love that area. Uh, but, you know, some people need jobs, so Perth is the better place for that. Also uh, very young as well. So, yeah, I just don't expect much from them. Two wins last season. Let's... I'll be surprised if they get five. And at number 13, we have the Goldfield Giants out from Kalgoorlie. Oh, well, they have a new head coach, Matthew Van Pelt. On paper, he looks really good. He's played professionally. I mean, he's a clean cut guy. He's a handsome fella. You know, he's probably one of the most handsome coaches in the entire league. That translates to wins on the basketball court. We'll find out. <laughs> Uh, but obviously they lost their MVP, Michael Dupree, who was like a 20-point-per-game scorer. So I wonder how they'll go uh, in recovering that. They did sign Randy Bell. Uh, he's played for, in Indonesia, I think. I mean, on paper, he looks really good. He passes the eye test. But again, with these imports, it's really hard to tell how they'll go in NBL 1. But yeah, Goldfield Giants, number 13. Coming in 12th, I have the Kalamunda Suns, Eastern Suns. They lost Joe Cook Green. That's enough said. <laughs> But they did sign Brian Michaels, who is top three, one of my top three favorite players in the entire league. He's really fun to watch. Um, I think he'll probably average around 30 points a game if he's just allowed to do whatever he wants. Unfortunately, the pieces around him aren't the greatest. Uh, they lost some veterans. They lost Carl Eilitz. Um Again, they're also a very young team. They have no depth. And yeah, the team around Brian Michaels just isn't up to NBA one level, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah. Still watch Calamunda games because I reckon Brian Michaels is going to go off. And yeah, he's going to be a really fun player to watch. Number 11, I have... Drumroll. I don't know why I said drumroll. But Mandra Magic. They did sign a huge seven-footer, um, Michael Durr. They've also signed Taj Benning. Uh, they signed Julian Pasava. So they've made some good signings. But again, the team around those players, they're young. Uh, they're obviously not the best. I, I'm rude. They're better than I am. But... <laughs> Yeah, they also have no depth. Like a lot of these teams, they obviously struggle with depth. I reckon Julian's going to have a really good year. Uh, I'm excited to see how their seven-footer goes. Um, Taj Benning, I'll hopefully get him on the podcast soon. I'm excited to see how he goes. But yeah, I don't really have them winning many games. Um, but yeah. Coming in 10th, I have Coburn Cougars. They've signed Carl Armour. Uh, they brought back their vets in Gavin, who's last season, uh, Seva. Uh, they signed Reese Vague. I thought it was a weird signing, but he's played juniors there, so I was told it wasn't a weird signing, but still. Uh, they have a new coach. What's his name? Mark Clayton. No idea about him. So, yeah. If you know him, let me know if he's a really good coach or not. Um, hopefully, Josh Hunt will make a really good leap this year. I think it's the season to do it. Um, they didn't perform really well last season. This season, I'm expecting pretty similar results. So, hopefully, he can really take that next step and be an absolute beast of a player. Again, same problem as all these other teams I've said. No depth at all. When we talked to Gavin, I asked him if they've got anyone coming up. He said there's some players to look at, you know, the under-18s, under-20s route, uh, but nothing for NBA 1 level just yet. So, yeah, I have them coming 10th. Coming in ninth, and this is probably the first season uh, that anyone has had them this low, I have the Perry Lakes Hawks. They have a new coach. They've lost a bunch of players. So, I mean, let's just go through the list. New coach, uh, Damien Barr, hasn't proved himself in the NBL 1 level. I mean, he's proved himself in the state level, but not NBL 1 level. They lost Mitch Clark. He's gone down to Bendigo. They're super young. Um, I am really excited to see Joel. They just signed Joel, the center. 
I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. But yeah, I'm really excited to see him as the number one option. Uh, players like AJ Nabensi, we'll see how he goes. I mean, he can run an offense. Guarding, though, not the best uh, defensive player. Sorry if he's watching. <laughs> But I mean, I, I watched the Redbacks Prairie Lakes game and pretty much all he did was whoever AJ was guarding, we just ran the offense like that. Um, yeah, because he just couldn't really stay in front of, uh, who was it? Brighton Hobbs. He couldn't stay in front of Brighton Hobbs, couldn't guard him in the post. So I'm expecting teams to pretty much do the exact same thing. But who knows? He could prove me wrong. He might have been in the gym this offseason. Who knows? But yeah, I have Prairie Lakes going ninth. Coming in eighth, making finals, I have the East Perth Eagles. This is a team that could 100% Shoot up the uh, ladder. Ladder rankings. I don't know what we call it in NBA 1. I'm going to say ladder. F- footy background. Uh, but yeah. Definitely a team that could uh, shoot up the ladder. They've got two maybe signings. Again, like I said earlier, I'm not going to leak anything. But these are really big signings if they do get them. But for now, what's been announced. I mean, they have Taylor Young. Great player. I mean, we had him in the podcast. Super chill dude. But yeah, really good player. We're excited to see what he does this season. Deborah Reed's coming back. Great rebounder. Great defender. Can score. I'm excited to see what he can do. But again, like I've said already for a lot of these teams, they're very young. Um, no depth. And last season, they had a very disappointing start, but a strong finish. So maybe they'll do the exact same thing this season. Or maybe they will just be an absolute beast from the start. Who knows? But yeah, at the moment, I do have East Perth Eagles coming eighth but at least they're in the finals coming in seventh i have lakeside lightning now some of you might be like why well i mainly have this because of mike malat he's a really good coach he did really well last season when the team that they put out just wasn't that good uh, i believe simo told me that they won seven of their last games uh heading into finals which is like really good obviously um they did sign some good on paper imports like on paper they look really good and they passed the eye test Mike Adewunmi and Marshawn Blackman. Again, with imports, it's really hard to tell how they're going to do an NBL 1. Like, you just don't know. Some are really good, some are really bad, some just don't perform. Um, but yeah, I mean, excited to see how they go. And I'm having Mike Latt on the podcast soon, and I'll definitely talk about this team then and get his opinions on the season. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, I have them seventh. So, still making finals. Coming in at sixth, and some of you may disagree with this one, I have the Warwick Senators. Some of you probably expect them to be a lot higher. Me? I just don't. Uh, Zach Quintana, obviously a really good signing. My opinion is Zach, he really does need a really good guard to feed him the ball. Obviously, they did kind of get that, but again, I want to be a contrarian. <laughs> Saying that compared to last season, they've lost some vets. Uh, they lost, I mean, Cody Ellis retired. Uh, Todd, they've signed Todd Withers. Uh, again, I don't really know much about him, but we'll see how he goes. Uh, but yeah, they're just unproven as a unit. Uh, they've never played before. I mean, I've heard good things about Andrew Cooper, uh, but we'll see how he goes again this season. But yeah, at the moment, uh, I have them coming six. Coming in number five, I have the Geraldton Buccaneers, the champions. That might seem kind of low to some of you. Again, I'm a contrarian. <laughs> Obviously, they won the championship last season, but they did lose Zach Quintana. They re-signed Johnny Narkel, which... Hopefully he starts this time because he was just killing teams off the bench and like I really didn't like seeing that. <laughs> but they're a very veteran team. They are really well coached. One of the best coaches in the entire league. Though I do have some inside information. I might leak this. I have heard some rumors going around that he might not be coming back. So if he doesn't, uh, who knows how they'll go. But he probably is coming back. I don't know. I've just heard rumors. Rumors, you know, you can never believe them. This team talks a lot of trash. So I reckon they're going to have targets on their back. People need to shut them up. <laughs> Yeah, but again, we'll see how they go. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I have them coming fifth. Number four, top four, here we go. Rockingham Flames. Again, to some of you, this might seem really low. Uh, but, you know, they're bringing back MVP Devondrick Walker, who just came back from Indonesia, I think. I have heard that he does have a little bit of an injury. So, again, we'll see how he recovers from that. Uh, they have re-signed Marshall Nelson, contrary to what some uh, of you do believe. <laughs> This team actually has really good depth. Uh, We are talking to Marshall Nelson earlier on the podcast as well, and he said that the young guys coming through are really good as well. But the guys that they have at the bottom of the bench are just really good contributors. So, yeah, they've got really good depth. I mean, they're a veteran team. They're well coached. So, you know, I am expecting uh, big things from them. But at the moment, just I have them coming forth. Number three, this might surprise some of you, but I have the Williton Tigers. This team last season performed really well. Uh, they signed Marco Dupree, the 20-point-per-game scorer from Kalgoorlie. Uh, he also averaged two steals, so he's a pretty good defender. Um, they are young, but they do have depth, even though they are young. 
Um, they're obviously well coached. They're a really hard team to beat uh, at home. They've signed Gang Dak, six foot ten. I mean, shot fifty percent from the field. Um, yeah, but they did lose uh, their import, who hit nine threes against the Redbacks last season. <laughs> uh, Darnell Hoskins, I believe his name is. Uh, but yeah, they did lose him, but they did bring in Michael Dupree. So we'll see how they go. But yeah, I do have them coming third. I really rate Willits and Tigers, even though I don't think they have the f- biggest fan base. But uh, yeah, I do have them coming third at the moment. Number two, I have the Junior Love Wolves. Some of you definitely have this team ranked number one, especially because they had such an amazing offseason. Uh, they signed Ethan Elliott. They signed Caleb Davis. They re-signed Jonathan Wade. Uh, but, you know, I do have some concerns with this team. They do not have a big yet. Uh, they're probably definitely going to go out and get one. Um, but they are also really top-heavy. Um, like, they don't, ha- they don't have the depth. We had CJ on the podcast, and he said he's right in his prime. This is probably the healthiest he's ever been. Uh, which is exciting to see and it's uh, exciting to hear. But with this does come some problems that I have. Um, CJ Turnage, Ethan Elliott, Caleb Davis, Jonathan Wade, all ball-dominant guys. They like they need the ball in their hands. And if they go out and get a big, depends who they get, but if they do get a big, a new, another import, uh, is he going to be ball-dominant too? Like, yeah, I've, I don't really know how they're going to go with all this. And obviously it's their first season together. Um, but, you know... Junior Light Wolves always end up performing really well, so we'll see how they go. But yeah, I do have them coming in two. That does mean coming in number one. No, this isn't a homer pick, but I do have the Perth Redbacks. This team had a really good offseason. Shout out to Knicks on recruiting all these guys. But they signed Joe Cook Green. They signed Giannis, not going to pronounce his last name. Uh, they signed some veterans, Carl Aylett. Uh, they brought in Stowe, who was actually captain of that manager team, even though he is young. Uh, but they re-signed Tevin. They, Maris is coming back. When we talked to Knicks, he said they were going to really run a fast-paced offense. I can see that. Um, they do have a lot of depth, like really good depth. And their import miles looks like an absolute beast in the post. And we'll see how he performs at the NBL 1 level. But yeah, he looks unreal. So yeah, I really expect this team to do well. With that being said, I do only give the Redbacks a one-year window. I don't think all those players are going to come back. So this is our one-year. Ow because I am a Redbacks fan. But this is our one year to win it, and I think they can do it. I think this team can definitely do it. At the moment, I don't really see a flaw with this team. I guess the only flaw would be that they haven't played together. Uh, But yeah, I really don't see a flaw. But let's go to the first ever Coach's Corner uh, with Coach Nix. Welcome to the first ever Coach's Corner with Coach Nix of the Perth Redbacks. Nixie, I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to answer them truthfully and honestly. I'm going to do my best anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Are the Redbacks the favourites to win this season? I think, uh, I think I've heard murmuring that we are. Um, in my opinion, I think there's probably four teams that can compete and we're one of them for sure. Uh, what game, men and women, should West fans watch round one? Uh, definitely the Wolves and Redbacks. I think for, for the men, obviously big Giannis heading back up to the Wolves. Uh, Caleb Davis and Ethan Elliott going um, up, to, up to Wolves as well. Um, it's just going to make them fairly formidable. Um, and yeah, I just, it's a game that we've been... Uh, we've penciled in since day one of preseason, uh, and I think for the women having Emma Clark off a fantastic WNBL season and Annalie Maley, Maley obviously uh, in that game, uh, it's going to be exciting, exciting to watch. I think if you're talking about sleepers, which I think you're going to ask me in a minute, I think the women Redbacks are, are definitely one of them. Who's a surprise contender? A sleeping giant this year? A sleeping giant. Oh, I don't know. I think Warwick. I think Warwick. I think. Um, they they just they've recruited Todd Withers is a stud like he's an outstanding player. Zach Katona is a proven winner, um, and Michael Harris has done wonderful things at NBL level. I think the the fan base they have is massive, um, so I think uh, you know and just financially they're they're a very stable club. So I think yeah, if you're talking sleeping giants, I think Warwick are the sleeping giant in the men's division. Sweet. Well, thank you for being on the first ever Coach's Corner. Thank you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my season predictions. These could be completely wrong. And, I mean, we are a month out, so (laughs) players can get signed and announced. And this could just muddle this all up. But, yeah, we'll see. I'm really excited to see at the end of the season how my predictions were. Again, leave a comment if you agree or disagree. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, follow, subscribe. I mean, I can't wait for the season. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Let's go.